Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor of Walden Community Church. And we are here. We are here. It's Revelation 22. It's the last chapter of Revelation. Welcome. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Congratulations for finishing the entire book. We started this a year ago, and it's just incredible that we're coming to the end right now. Uh, we got two more lessons. And then you'll be able to say that you've read the entire book, that you studied it. And hey, I was learning right there along with you. I really was. Um, I, I wanted to do these as full-length sermons, uh, spend 45 minutes on every single uh, chapter and really flesh everything out. Just didn't work out like that, but that's fine. You know, I think just going through it a little bit at a time and doing it more as a Bible study and less as... Uh, sermons probably worked out better for some of us. And so we're going to start right at the top of Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life, and its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And no longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. This is very similar to the chapter that we just read, where John is taken by the angel, he's given a tour of the New Jerusalem. Remember we said it was a big, a big cube floating through space, and uh, he sees all the walls and all the angels standing guard and all the towers, and uh, we talked about the pearly gates and the streets of gold. And again, I think uh, John is using human words to describe things in heaven, and he's talking about crystal and water, and, you know, it's just more bright imagery. And again, he mentions, again, you know, there's no sun, there's no moon. We're receiving all of our light from being in God's presence. There's no night. He talks about how there'll be uh, food constantly for us. And then even in verse 3, he says there won't be anything accursed anymore. Uh, we talked about that last time too, saying, you know what? There's no crying in heaven. There's no tears. There's no sadness. You don't have to worry about death or your friends dying or your family dying or you getting sick or someone else getting sick. All those humanly worries are removed and taken away. And I, and I think over and over again, John is literally... More than trying to describe heaven, I think he's just trying to get that, that feeling across that there's no more worry. Like I had this over, re, overwhelming sense of just relaxation and peace and joy and just being in God's presence. I think, I think something like that, yes, would be hard for a human to describe. I think John's doing his best. I don't know that we need to read a lot into all of this to try to find, you know, what's the symbol of this and what does this mean? I think he's just really trying to communicate that being with God, being in his presence is the best. In verse six, he says, and he said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. And behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. So again, uh, another statement repeated from earlier in the book these words are true, right? This is going to happen. And I think as, by nature, I think human beings were kind of doubtful and we're kind of pessimistic and probably a little arrogant. You know, we always think, I'll never get sick. I'll never die. And uh, my family will just, you know, live in happiness forever and ever and nothing will ever change. Well, Revelation says that the world will change. The world will change. And we're kind of arrogant to think that the way we know the world right now, the existence that we know with all the countries and rules and laws and presidents and kings and, you know, peace treaties and whatnot, we're arrogant to think that the world will go on like this forever or that it'll only get better, right? So for the angel to say, hey, these words are true, okay? Don't ignore this. Things, think this is going to happen. Verse 8, he says, I, John... I am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But he said to me, you must not do that. 
I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets, and with those who keep the words of this book, worship God. So John, I think, is just overwhelmed and confused, and he's in the presence of a heavenly being, and he bows down to worship. But the angel says, hey, I'm a servant. I'm, I'm like you. I'm a created being just like you. We can't worship anything else but Jesus, Jesus alone. And I think this is a really good reminder, you know, as the world might try to belittle Jesus and make him out to be less. I think there's always going to be a message out there from people, from the world that says, oh, Jesus was a great teacher. He was a great prophet. He was a guru. He was a magician. He was a sensei, right? The angel says, no, he is God. He is God and he alone is to be worshiped. Verse 10 says, and he said to me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is near. That's a very uh, telling verse and very ironic verse considering that it's in Revelation, right? Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book. In other words, don't hide this book away. Make sure you write this down. As soon as you get home, John, write this down, write this down, and then make sure people know about it. Make sure you put this book in the hands of people so they know about it, because why? For the time is near, which is ironic because this is a book that we typically ignore, right? We ignore this book, and here's a warning in the book. Don't ignore this book. We don't like this book. We don't like this book. We don't want to read this book. It's confusing. We're kind of scared of it. And yet the angel says, hey, as soon as you get back, you write this down and you make sure that you put this in the hands of people, that you make sure they know this. People need to know. How, how will they know about the mark of the beast and not to take it if you don't tell them? How will they know about the Antichrist if you don't tell them? Like, people need to know. And then there's a confusing verse here in verse 11. It says, Let the evildoer still do evil, and the filthy still be filthy, and the righteous still do right, and the holy still be holy. What? Let the evil doer still do evil and the filthy still be filthy. Why would, why would the Bible encourage you to continue to do evil? Well, remember, the angel is warning John and saying, put this in the hands of people and let them read this. They need to know. And then he says, and if after they read this and they know, right? If they've read Revelation and they're still unchanged, you know, if, the, if you read Revelation and you're still indifferent, if you, still wrote, if you read Revelation and you're still like, eh, it doesn't really change my mind about end times. I'm still going to live the way I want to live. Then the angel says, well, then there's no hope for you. If, if you've read this book and you still uh, are going to choose sin and you say, you know what? I'll risk it. We'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, damn the consequences. The Bible says, okay. Keep on going. See ya. You, you continue to be unrighteous. You continue to be filthy. Go for it. But, the Bible says, if you choose to be rewarded later, if you don't choose your reward now, you choose later. You choose heaven. The Bible says, well, then keep going. Keep going. You're on the right path. Keep doing what is right. Keep doing what is right. But tell people. Tell them because the end is near. One more to go. See you guys next time. Bye.